Hey everyone and welcome back to the Movie Mates video. I am Matthew, of course, joined by my wonderful co-host and best friend. Sean. Hey man, absolutely lovely to see you. So uh, to on today's you. today's show, we have uh, another One Division review in which um, you know, if you haven't seen our first One Division uh, video, which was uh, a few podcast episodes ago, we broke down the first two episodes which were released last week. Yeah, that, that quick 52 minute episode. Yeah, yeah, you know. I know, I know. We always go in and say like I'm, 10, 10 I'm minutes. So I'm longer. optimistic this episode will be like 10 minutes. I think, I think like, it will that, be short. That, I think it will be that's a my That's one. my hope. For sure, for sure. And it helps we're only breaking down one episode here today. So yeah, episode three came out uh, on Friday and uh, yeah, we're, we're back to talk about it. So of course, Full spoiler disclosure here as well. And um, yeah, just before we kick off today's video, uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on One Division down below. We'd love to hear it. And if you haven't checked out our latest podcast episode, we uh, we sought the help of our best friend Cash to break down uh, the Riverdale Season 5 premiere. It was an absolute blast to record, and we really do pre appreciate Cash's time on that one. So check it out if you haven't seen it, guys. It's a, it was really, really fun one to record. But, but yeah, uh, as always, time codes... And the, uh, and the email and stuff is down in the description for you guys as well. So um, I'll just, I'll just, I'm um, happy to go by your remarks, okay. bud, and I'll, I'll chip in where I can, yeah? Well, you know, I may, uh, I, I feel like we, we do need to say that, you know, we there there's obviously going to be spoilers for uh, this week's episode, but I, I think also potentially for the, for the future, because I feel like there will yeah. be some theorizing uh, as, the, as there was with our episode last week. I think so. so I think so. You know, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about because I've listened to a couple of inter interviews with uh, Catherine Hahn, uh, Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, and we talked last week about Elizabeth Olsen's Sokovian accent and how it's completely disappeared. And, you know, she sort of explained that it was like weaned out uh, as a purpose of, you know, becoming a spy under the tutelage of Black Widow. Yeah. Uh, but in a recent interview, she also asked in response to that question once again, because she must get that all the time. I imagine said, so, yeah. This time, uh, th this time she said that, well, Wanda's on an American sitcom, uh, you know, so you'll just have to see, implying that, you know, once we're out of the, you know, American sitcom era, she'll have the Sokovian accent again. And I, you know, I I really don't, I think that's utter bullshit. Like, yeah, I just, I I just so. think they can't keep track of this. Like, yeah. it, it'll be interesting to see it again, but, like, that that's not, you know, the American sitcom excuse is, is not going to fly. I'm not you know, like it. it's, it's I'm been, not buying it. You know, yeah, she had, she had seemingly forgot about it, you know, in Infinity War, uh, and, you know, there's no explanation for that. Like, you can't, yeah. you can't have two different explanations, both ending with her getting the Sokovian accent back. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it just doesn't work. No, I, I absolutely agree, for sure. And, yeah, I, I think... I think the more likely explanation is was probably the 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 the, the first one uh, in which she said you know it, it was you know Black Widow you know uh, Avengers training which I suppose makes a little bit of sense although I think we did ridicule it in the in the first uh, couple episode uh, review but what's but yeah I mean hopefully hopefully um they if they do try to retcon that or try to you know address that pro plot line um or that little uh, that little part of her character I hope they do it well because. Um, I suppose that the big, if we're going to go into like the big crux of of, uh, of this week's episode, um, it, it really did um, spice up. It got really spicy towards the end, you know, it got mm. really, really tense. And um, it, it, it appears then, obviously, we see that Wanda's pregnancy is, of course, really accelerated in which she gives birth in a matter of days uh, to, um, to twins. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see because... Apparently, in the comics, I think her kids are Speed and Wiccan, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I the don't character know if... of yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, the character of uh, Billy, uh, you know, the the second child born, uh, that's Wiccan, and then Tommy, uh, the, the firstborn child, is Speed. I believe. Okay, that's really interesting. I hope so I modeled that. It's interesting because, uh, do you think they're gonna? We sort of mentioned this in the first episode. Uh, in the in the first one division episode, but do you reckon they're going to try and um, erase those that that the, the sort of pregnancy from the fr from the from the timeline, or what do you think they're going to do? Because obviously we we're not sure of what Wanda's abilities are so far. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to delve too much into comments on the comics uh, because you know I feel like there are a lot of spoilers there that I that I'm yes. aware of. But I don't want to I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, yeah, we had sort of come up with the conclusion that it didn't seem like the kids were going to make it out of the series in one piece and grow up to be Wiccan and Speed. Yeah. So I was I was surprised to see them. You know that they made the characters the you know comic appropriate characters of Tom Tommy and Billy, which sort of see it seems like they can't 
erase the pregnancy entirely because I feel like then you're robbing, you know, you're, you're robbing the fans of, of those characters. Uh, but, you know, if they, if they just said, the, you know, these are Wanda's children and, you know, it was just the trope of her children being taken from her, you know, led her to be insane. I feel like that would have been, that would have played a bit better than if they were to just, you know, take her kids out yes. of the equation entirely, you know, being those characters. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like they have to pursue them being those characters in the future. Obviously with the looming, uh, you know, Young Avengers project, yeah, I, I feel, yeah, I feel like true. they, I feel like they have to successfully grow up. I think they're going to be, I, I think by the end of the series, they're not going to be, like you know, I, as as we said, I I don't think they're making it out of the series, but I'll, I think I think they'll return. Yeah, I, I think in, in in some fashion, dude. I think they probably will have to age them up. Would be that you know where by a tri time travel mechanism or just you know find uh you know a, a speed and wicked front in the multiverse. It might not be strictly those characters, but now that they've mm. sort of introduced them, I think it is. It would be a bit of a backtrack to suggest that yeah. By the way, we're not really going to pursue anything with those those comic characters. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, with, with their characters, like, souls, you know, the, their souls seem to be sort of a, of a very big part of their characters. I'll, I'll, not, I'll not reveal too yeah. much, but, you know, mm -hmm. the, the idea of the soul is, is heavily involved with those characters. So I feel like their souls could be time displaced somehow. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I feel, I feel like there is like a way sure. to do it. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, th clearly, I agree. I agree. you know, what Wanda seems to have the power to, you know, sort of create Infinity Stones, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's there's been sort of promotional material where she's, seen like in front of the the mind stone or potentially other infinity stones so it, it is possible that you know she can bend reality so far that she can create infinity stones so i, I feel like, i feel like the idea of the soul uh you know could, could maybe do something yeah. with, you know with those characters yes. yeah for sure, for it, sure is, but... it is hard to theorize without giving too no, much weight because I, no, I, I, I know is. i know a bit about the comics yeah no it, it absolutely is hard to it's kind of sort of bypass the, the comic storylines because they are so important but you know we, we kind of you know, briefly mentioned there, like Wanda's abilities to sort of like create, create things, you know, obviously the pregnancy and, and of course, you know, uh, you know, vision potentially, you know, we don't know. But one, one thing I, I'm not sure if I picked up correctly in this episode was that it appeared to me that sort of Wanda was editing events, you know, replaying certain scenes the way she wants them to sort of, um, to sort of occur you know i think we saw that with the uh, the beekeeper uh, last uh, a couple episodes ago so do, do you think do you think there's any basis for that like do, is that what that, that is what happened wasn't it yeah i think anything that you know has has the visual like cue of uh you know her red magic I, I think anything to do with that she's responsible for uh but i think anything otherwise is potentially another uh you know malevolent force yes. uh you know mm -hmm. we we sort of have both we're, we're both on the train that she's you know perhaps uh, created this reality and she's in it but someone has entrapped her in it you know she can't leave and she has had her memory wiped or something like yeah. that you know mm -hmm. but but she clearly has some domain over it you know you mentioned uh you know la last week with mr hart you know and him choking that that was uh probably down to wanda and obviously she she reversed uh re reversed time in, in episode two but here when sort of vision is put back it, it, do it doesn't include her magic so I, I feel I feel like potentially someone else is responsible yeah. for that. Yeah, I, it's it's. I, I'm really excited to see where they're going to go with this, but because there's like we sort of said, there's a million different ways they could go here. So it just it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen for sure. And to sort of mention, you know, the the sitcom the sitcom tropes because that's obviously you know heavily, yeah. uh, you know, seen throughout these episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, the the cutest intro yet. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the 70 style intro was probably, uh, well, it was definitely my favourite so far. Absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, as is, you know, tradition with these uh, with these episodes, of course, there's like a, a mid-break advert with some kind of Marvel reference in there. This time it comes in the form of Hydra Soak, which I thought was maybe a little bit disappointing when compared to the first two. It, it didn't really quite hit the mark as the as the, uh, as the first two. But that being said, you know, it's, it's still, it's, of course, you know, it's, I love it nonetheless. You know, it's really interesting to see. Maybe they have any basis for the show. Maybe it's just a, 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 a this reference. I don't know. Yeah. And to me, to me, when it came to, you know, the, the intro of the episode, it's it just, you know, I, I sort of mentioned in the, in the previous episode that Wanda and Vision are my favorite MCU couple. Yeah. And, you know, they, they have they have a bit more of a, an age difference going on. But for some reason, they're, they're just incredibly believable, more, more so than any yeah. other one in, in, you know, more so than any other couple in the, in the franchise, I think. For sure. And when you see the intro of them being so happy, being so in love, it kind of makes me really sad that it they might not get a happy ending together. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really want them to, like we sort of said, bud, I, I, we'd love to see just a sitcom, a genuine sitcom with them in it. Like, it's just so charming to watch. So um, it's just a pity of mind or eye in that way. 
Yeah, and you know, we, we've sort of talked about whether vision is creation of this reality or whether, you know, the, the idea of whether reality has been changed so that he has, you know, where, that he never died or that, you know, reality, that he's been added back into reality. So he died, but he's been reborn, yes. you know, so yeah, the, yeah. The, there's, a, there's a few different ideas that sort of change whether this is, you know, sort of, as, as I referred to my original recipe, vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, to, to put that aside, He's still fucking dumb because, you know, he, you know, we, we, we learned that, you know, Wanda has, you know, uh, gained six months of pregnancy in 12 hours. And yet he estimates that the day of the birth is three days away yeah, and not uh, yeah. six hours away. Yeah, I know. I know. They kind of really do dumb vision down in this in the sitcom. You know, I suppose that is for, you know, of course, for for comedy, uh, the comedy aspect there. But I don't know. I kind of the, the, the character of vision, even though it probably is a different version of him. It, it feels like such a departure of like the vision from age of ultron like they seem like two totally different characters and i do get that you know vision's becoming more human you know we saw that in civil war but here i i, I don't know I, I don't know like of course with the sitcom aspect i expect them to be a lot more humorous and uh, and things like that but it's it's even things where they add you know him running at super speed and stuff like it, it's it's really unusual like i think we both uh, agreed that it was never like a, a, a power that was typical of him in the movies anyway but it's a, it seems like an, a fresh creation here. And clearly his adding's not up to scratch, but his deducing is. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you, do you think it's too quick to go from seemingly no one knowing anything about what's going on to seemingly everyone being suspicious? You know, I, I think we're both in agreement that, you know, th this, this isn't original vision. This is uh, a character who's a creation of this reality. Yes. So I don't know why whoever programmed him to be this way gave him the functionality to deduce. You know, if you clearly want everyone oblivious to this situation, yeah. why why would you put the one person that has been willed into existence specifically for this instance? Yeah. Uh, you know, why would you give that one person uh, the you know the yes you know yeah. in intellectual intellectual capability to do that for sure when, when you could just program him to just be a doting husband to Wanda completely. It's it's such a great point, and you know, I think I think the main thing that sort of tips him off in this episode is isn't it is the is the neighbor when he's like he's cutting through uh, you know Vision's wall. And it's kind of a, it's kind of an unusual one. It kind of really reminded me of the scene in the first episode where, you know, Mr. Hart's choking. Like, it felt really sort of unnatural, really tense. And I, I suppose that's intentional as well. And, you know, I suppose if we're going to talk about, you know, the main mystery here uh, by the end of the episode, it kind of se seemed to me as if, you know, when, um, oh, what, what was the name of the woman who was uh, helping Wanda with her pregnancy in the show? uh monica monica yeah when it when it, it appears we know monica makes a reference to to of course quicksilver which i thought was a really really interesting thing that they did it kind of seems to me like she was almost banished from this uh reality by wanda and you know yeah. i'm not sure if i if i glimpsed this correctly but it, it kind of reminded me of like a, a simpsons movie style dome or something like that yeah. was, was that right what, what was going on there do you think yeah you know we we've seen sort of uh in the promotional material two different kind of kinds of dome uh, you know, one sort of like, you know, bubbly kind of vibe where, you yeah. know, you put your hand through and, you know, seemingly when you walk through, you're transformed into whatever era of sitcom uh, there is, you know, yeah. uh, Monica Rambo walked through and she became Geraldine, uh, you know, the, this new woman in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that, that, that was the initial look, uh, you know, when she enters, uh, you know, some, some of the theorized next episode is going to be like from the perspective of S.W.O.R.D., uh, you know, the, the agency that's trying to break into you know, this new reality, uh, you know, so I, th I think we'll get a few more answers on whatever episode that, that may be. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may be next episode, it may, it may be another one, uh, but, you know, us sort of getting a glimpse of S.W.O.R.D., uh, you know, at the very end of the episode, you know, may, may indicate that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, further in, you know, promotional material, mm -hmm. there's also uh, a look at the dome where it's covered in, you know, Wanda's red magic, seemingly when she takes in complete and utter control by the end of the series. Yeah, it, it's so, it really fascinates me to see where they're going to go with that, because I, for, for, for me, I almost thought it was like someone who was, you know, entrapping Wanda in there and forcing her to create that reality. Maybe that's an aspect they'll go down, I, I, I don't know. But even the fact that they just referenced Quicksilver, it, it's glad to see that they're not afraid to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're not afraid to bring that up. I'm, I'm, I think he might have a potential role in here. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It was it was nice to hear, but yeah, the immediate reaction is, you know, what? Why does Wanda's ideal suburban life not include an alive Pietro? Yeah, uh, you know, yes. but I feel like I feel like we we may well see him. Uh, you know, 
the Spanish dubbing actor for Evan Peters, Quicksilver, uh, you know, co confirmed that he's, uh, I mean, I don't think this is true, you know, because it seems too dumb. Like, I, I don't think they it's would not Evan Peters, this. Quicksilver, is and, it? Well, that, you know, set, set photos have contradicted this, but uh, the Spanish voice dubber of, of Evan Peters, uh, you know, has said that, that he's back playing Quicksilver. But I think what he means is he, he's back in a project where he's voicing Ev Evan Peters in whatever character he is. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, Hope he's I got don't confused. think he's, I don't think he's Quicksilver. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, Quicksilver arrives on the scene and says, hello, I'm Quicksilver. You know, so, I mean, <laughs> I, f I feel like the guy wouldn't know, uh, you know, regardless. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I know. I, I hope he's got confused because if, if, imagine he's playing Quicksilver. That'd be so, so strange. I mean, I would love to have, see Evan Peters, and you know, there there have been set photos of him like in a in a farm setting, you know, with, with Paul Bettany, and you know, I'd love to see him play any character, Mephisto, or any kind of pre preferably like a nefarious character, because I, I sort of like seeing him play play a more nefarious character on American Horror Story. Uh, you know, I think that I think that's where he shines. Uh, so so that, that that's kind of the the role I'd prefer to see him in, but I. I really don't want to see him play Quicksilver yeah, no, whatsoever. Neither, like, no, if, if, if there's a Quicksilver, I, I want it to be Aaron Taylor Johnson. Absolutely, and I think Aaron Taylor Johnson gets a gets a hard time for his portrayal of Quicksilver. I, I actually, part of me kind of prefers it to Evan Peters, uh, which is quite, you know, I didn't really expect me to think that and I, but I, I don't know. I, 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 I actually think his, his performance in Age of Ultron was really great. I thought, I, I really loved the character. Yeah, you know, it's the writing, like, that's not a good movie. You know, put, put that same character in a good in a good project, and I think you, you get a successful situation. You know, Absolutely. it had nothing to do with Absolutely. Aaron Taylor Johnson. It was it was Joss Whedon. Yes, no, agreed. Absolutely agreed, man, for sure. Because, I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I genuinely find, uh, you know, the first Avengers film borderline unwatchable. I, yeah, I think no, it's I terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, are, yeah. are you, are you the, I know you're not of that strong an opinion, but, like, I imagine that that's probably I think, your least favorite. Of I the think four. the first two Avengers films are definitely the weakest of the four, which um, which I'm not sure. I, I probably goes against public uh, opinion, public perception of it, to be honest. But no, I, I think the I, I think Joss Whedon's quite overrated. Uh, you know, mm. well, I, I what's think, your tier list, Matthew? Well, yeah, the, I think if we were going to put the Avengers film in the tier Just list, Avengers one. Yeah, I'd say Endgame, God tier for me, as well as Infinity okay. War. And then maybe the first Avengers like B tier, and then Age of Ultron maybe a B tier as well. Like they're they're all I, I love I like them all, but I th I, don't, I, th I think Joss Whedon's quite overrated generally. I, I think massively. Like I, I really like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, but you know he's I think he's an ideas man, but not an execution man. That's really uh, you know smart, the idea of bringing all yeah. these characters together and that composition of characters is genius. Yeah. But I don't think any of the jokes land, and I think Loki was a terrible villain to choose. Uh, and, you know, it started the trope of a faceless CGI alien army, which is obviously not one that you want to sort of uh, perpetuate. And, you know, it's what he repeated in Justice League to, yes, you know, massive did. failure. But quite mm -hmm. honestly, if, if you ask me which one do I want to sit down and watch, I'm picking Justice League. Like, yeah. it's not a good film. Uh, you know, no, it's I'd sort agree. of garish, over the top, not funny. But, you know, I, I feel like it, you know, it is a more enjoyable experience than the Avengers. You know, it I is, it, it's a controversial opinion, but I just think it's, it's I agree. Steel. I'd rather watch Justice but, League and Avengers or Age of Ultron, to be honest. And I, I'm, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, if, if, sure. if I had to tier list that, you know, I think none of them are god tier, but like great is Avengers Infinity War, uh, good uh, Age of Ultron, uh, shite uh, Avengers and <laughs> Sangam. Yeah, I love it. I love the honesty. You know, I, I, th I yeah, fair, each to their own, but each to their own, I think. I think I'm just glad Joss Whedon has less of an influence in the Marvel films these days, you know, if any. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I mean, you know, there have obviously been some uh, claims by Ray Fisher uh, about his conduct on, on the set of Justice League. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Which, you know, I, know. I, I don't know we'll, we'll ever get the full answers to because I feel like there's a lot of bureaucracy there that doesn't want, you know, everything uh, coming out necessarily. Unraveled, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think so. You know, who, who, whoever is, you know, at fault or telling the truth you know i i, I just don't think we'll ever 100 percent have the answers no i agree it's one of those situations isn't it where that th this truth will never be you know answered you know unraveled so to speak so i agree for sure so i wanted to ask you about uh the near future of this show mm -hmm. the, the next episode uh you know we've sort of seen uh the, the sort of slow uh revelations you know be, being made by the characters you know vision is becoming slightly suspicious 
Wanda subconsciously knows but doesn't allow herself to. You know, yes. the, the information is sort of trickling in and she's rejecting it by physically throwing Monica out, out of this fantasy reality. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, do you think that episode four will like return to the status quo of episode one or do you think it'll pursue the new information that was learned in this episode? I actually think um, the theory that it, it's from sorts per, uh, perspective might probably is the most likely one for me. I think that's where it might go. I think, um, you know, it's, it, it might be the end of the sitcoms anyway, or that, that sort of, um, that sort of interpretation. I might, I might just, I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong, but I do think there's definitely no, uh, you know, questions left unanswered, you know, especially with the character of Dottie and, and other characters, you know, are they all shield agents? What's going on there? But because clearly some of them are real people. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, obviously we saw with Monica as well as Geraldine, but I don't know. I have, I have a feeling there might be some like undercover shield agents in there, maybe trying to, trying to find, find things out. I don't know. Or, or maybe, maybe sword agents rather. Sorry. Um, I should say, but I, I don't know. What, what, where do you reckon it's going to go, man? Yeah, I hope the episode four is from a uh, sword's perspective because I feel like, uh, you know, whilst I loved these first three episodes of sitcoms and we know that there are further to come, you know, we still have uh, the, the 80s episode, the 90s episode and the 2000s episode, uh, one of which was a Halloween episode where they wear their classic costumes. So yeah. we have that to look forward to. So we know that's coming, uh, but I feel like uh, a break might might be appropriate, uh, you know, to sort of, you know, keep it a bit fresh and to give the audience some answers because I think it is a bit, it's a bit of a request for sort of new viewers, you know, to, to watch along. I, th I think this week's was the most accessible episode, but I feel like if you want the entire series to be accessible, uh, I, I feel like sort of track, you know, trucking along with the, with the sitcom tropes with like no breather uh, may, yeah. may be a bit too much to ask for some viewers. Obviously, we'll stick around because we're, we're massive fans. Massive fans, uh, Well, yeah. nor normally, I feel, like, I feel like I'm sort of a, I'm a wavering fan of the, the MCU. You know, I'm a fan of the superheroes in it. Uh, but I feel like sometimes I feel a bit let down by the projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that completely, buddy. I think in terms of this TV show as a whole, though, quality-wise, it might be one of my favourites uh, favorites ever, really. I, I think it's really on that trajectory. I mean, the first three episodes, I think this one's definitely, you know, when, when, we'll, when, you, when you go on to rate it soon, I think this is this definitely my favourite episode so far. You know, every episode has just improved and improved. And this one's not perfect either, so it's always encouraging to know that, like, they, that they could still progress and have, or of uh, you know a 10 out of 10 episode in in the future so i'm just so excited to see where they're going to go like uh, there's a million different different routes they could go down and um and yeah obviously it, it, it's going to link to some movies in the future as well which is which is always exciting too so um but yeah is there any more remarks from you man well i was just wondering what what is the last mcu project that you liked as much as this show that's a really good question i think obviously we'll we'll use we'll, uh, apart from maybe Endgame and Far From Home. I, I, I actually really love those movies. I'm trying to think what else. Like, I, I I really love everything the MCU does, to be honest with you. I mean, Captain Marvel was one I really loved as well, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. In terms of one that maybe has missed the mark recently, um, I would probably say... That's a really good question. A really good question. Um, I don't know. I, I think Jessica Jones Season 2 was an absolute disgrace. Like that was that was that, that was. Did, did you did you even get all the way through it? I did, I did. That was a while ago you as did. well. That must have been a good couple of years ago, at least three years ago, maybe. Jessica Jones yeah. season two was maybe some of the worst I've seen uh, ever. Uh, that was that bad. Maybe that's harsh, but I don't know. What what about you? What, what, no, what, 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 well, Marvel Netflix is crazily inconsistent. You know, yeah. Daredevil seasons one and three are some of the best television ever made. For sure, I and agree. Then, and then you get. You know, Luke Cage season one and two, Jessica Jones season two, Iron Fist season one. I think is tolerable, uh, but it is it's not great. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like it's it's nowhere near as bad as people said, but I I have to hold my hands up and say it's not great. The yeah. fight choreography for you know supposedly one one you know one of the best kung fu uh, you know yeah I, uh, I know I know you know fight fighters in the it's world hurt. like he he should have obviously been you know spectacular and it was it was dreadful it but was. you know that that's down to choreography not not storytelling uh you that's know so true. i feel like storytelling wise it, it, it was admirable enough but yeah I, I i feel like i haven't really loved an mcu project uh movie wise since spider-man homecoming uh you know a few yeah. a few there's been a few you know hi highlights since then uh yeah. you know thor, thor ragnarok was great uh but i feel like spider-man homecoming was like peak MCU, despite you know barely being in it, you know it's yeah. uh, made by Sony, of course. 
But yeah, I, f- I feel like that just hit a real high that, that yeah. they haven't managed to hit until one division. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think I think for me, in terms of the peak of the MCU, it was definitely 2014. Uh, f- for me anyway yeah. you know obviously we had Winter Soldier Guardians of the Galaxy Daredevil was announced it wasn't out yet but mm-hmm. still like um, that was peak MCU for me I think one division though it's, it, it, hopefully there could be a resurgence there though for sure I, I absolutely love this show um, but yeah do you have any more remarks dude? No, nothing else for me Matthew no worries what would you rate this episode out of 10 buddy? I mean I feel like that this might just end up being tens all, all across the board for all episodes unless they like really disappoint me or I'm, like, or I'm like oh there really wasn't enough in this episode they really didn't sell me on this yes. the acting was bad I feel mm-hmm. like I would need a criticism like that to knock it down yeah. because I just think the, the composition of it and sort of the, the foreshadowing and just the, the storytelling on display is just uh, you know next level and you know I, th- I think Disney Plus is probably the best streaming service like I feel like Netflix has more stuff on it but it's you know, crazily inconsistent. You know, if you get a Netflix original movie, it's 50-50 whether it's going to be yeah, good is. or bad. Uh, but you know, is. when you watch a Disney Plus original series, there haven't been many, but they're all they're all bangers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I, so think, I, think I, th- so. I think I have to give the episode a 10 out of 10. Lovely. No, I love that. But I love that, buddy. You know, I, th- I think I think WandaVision has been absolutely amazing so far. You know, for, for me, this episode was the best one yet. The last 10 minutes were especially tense. So great. And, um, and yeah, you know, I, I love these characters. So I think I'm going to go for a nine for this episode. Uh, really, really strong. But um, but yeah, uh, that wraps up another WandaVision recap uh, slash review. So stay tuned uh, next week as well. We'll, we'll be reviewing episode four. Um, really excited to do these um, every weekend as well. So thanks very much uh, today, buddy. Appreciate that. Thanks very Thank much, you. everyone who has uh, watched today. Really do appreciate that. As always, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on the TV show down below. We're always there to read them. And yeah, hope you guys are all safe and well. Hope your family and friends are all safe and well. Take care and bye-bye.